Well, funnily enough, um, I presented those models never intending to do anything other than say, this is what I can do. I didn't intend to write those stories. I just thought, what would I really like to make? Um, I really like monsters and robots and witches, and so I made monsters and robots and witches. And one of those was turned out to be Bitbot, um, who started as an idea. The strap line underneath was, a, was for alien robot in my attic. That's where it came from, really, just a scribble. You can thank my mum for that. I think she bought me some cake decorating icing when I was probably about six, and I thought it was fantastic that you could just make anything you liked. Um, and I think I started using the clay that I now use. I still use the same clay when I was about eight years old. Uh, and it was just a, a great hobby. I've always done it. Um, I did a piece of model making at university for illustration thinking, this is my last chance to do something like this and get it properly photographed because then I'll have to go and get a job and, and do something proper. And I've actually got a job being a model maker and never done anything else since. I use a polymer, um, which is actually a children's clay, coloured children's clay called Fimo or Fimo, depends how you want to pronounce it, which um, is ideal. It's like plasticine. You use it in exactly the same way. You can mix the colours and you just bake it in an ordinary oven and uh, it goes hard and you can work with that. I use lots and lots of other things as well, but the main one, the faces, the hands, the fine detail stuff is all in Fimo. I started I'm completely self-taught, so I started making quite elaborate um, jointed figures with wire joints and things that had proper sort of, when they had no clothes on, they looked like a human body but with these sort of wire joints. And I quite quickly realised not only did they break and they take a long time, but if you just use pipe cleaners and put fabric over the bodies, then you can get the range of movement you need without any of that faffing about. But it is really trial and error. So if ever I've got something new to make, one of the greatest things is figuring out how I'm going to make it work and how it needs to look and how it needs to move. Um, and it's literally just trial and error, whatever I've got hanging around. I make all their clothes. People often ask that. You don't find dolls' clothes at the right scale. But also I will make the figure first and then I will dress them. So they have bespoke outfits in that sense. I make their clothes to fit. Um, and then I get exactly what I want. Fabric's hard to find though. I do have to tend to paint small designs if I need patterns. Well, uh, the book I'm working on at the moment, I will make the models first and I will build the sets to their scale because often they will not be proportioned like human beings, for instance. So if they want to sit in a chair, they've got quite short legs and quite big heads. So I'll make the model first, find out the dimensions of how it needs to sit and then make whatever they're sitting on and then build the set around it. Um, but then, once you do more books, you've got your sets, you've got your models, you just expand. Um, so sometimes I will already have a set and I will redress it with new things. Um, so it really varies on what I'm working on. Um, originally, I worked with another company that stored them. There is a big warehouse in Oxford that has a large room full of thousands of my models for that previous company. But now I keep my models, they're mine. Um, and if I make too many books, I have no idea where I'll keep them. I have a studio that has an upstairs floor and I stack them in boxes and keep them all in there so far. I work about five minutes walk from where I live. Um, so I'm really lucky. It's an old stable um, which has sort of fairly low light, which is ideal for making models because you can see what you're doing and you can also light it to photograph it. Um, and I can make as much mess as I like and then close the door and go home and not think about it until the next day. Again, that varies what I'm photographing. Some of the big sets I've done in the past have involved um, a, a photographer, usually, and often someone helping them to light the set. There'll be me there directing. I, I have had several assistants before helping me set things up, but at the moment it's usually just me. But it always helps to have a designer on hand or an editor who can see what I've done because it's very intensive. Basically, I want everything to be stood up and not falling over. Whereas there'll be somebody checking the story and making sure that everybody is looking in the right direction and whoever is speaking has got the right expression, that kind of thing. I'll be honest, I'm kind of working on my dream project. Um, I would like to have finished it a bit sooner because I have a small son and the story is something that I wanted 
him to read and he'll probably be grown out of it by the time it's finished. But no, I love what I'm doing. Um, I, I, if I get to do something bigger and more elaborate, fabulous, um, I love to work in animation, but I'm not really trained for that. So at the moment, this is perfect. I'm really happy.